Hello, performing artists, my creative community, conscious makers and sharers. We're going to do a little self paced practice today. Just a little moment for you to come into connection with yourself and pace yourself, deepen into your body, your experience of where you're at in this moment, and maybe even a connection to how memory, so past, how present, so experience now, and how future, so imagination and possibility are coming into interplay with you in this moment. So a lot of the things that we get to experience and explore as performing artists, we can actually uh, transfer those skills to some of our life experiences as well. So not just in the studio, but a kind of integrative practice, not everything we do, right? But some of the foundational principles of what deepens us into more honest performing arts practices also can help us deepen into more self-intimacy, relational wellness, and creative well-being in the work that we do in the world. So one of the things that I love, which isn't necessarily something you do in, in a, a class, for performing arts, but it is something that I would bring into some of my classes sometimes because I enjoy the possibility of not knowing what's going to come up next, being alive in the moment. And I think the aliveness of a moment is something that in performing arts, we connect to a lot. And for me, I like to bring in a little bit of card medicine. So I have my spirit song tarot deck uh, today. I, I think I pulled a card last week too. And it was one of my students' favorite things that I would do. So I thought I'd bring it back into our self-paced practice, at least every now and again. It's not a consistent flavor. We'll see how things continue to go. But I've been doing, as I shuffle, I'll just chat with you. As I've been doing um, the last few weeks, adding a self-paced practice about once a week into the Patreon. So if uh, you're watching this, because I've been sharing them in my stories just free, for about 24 hours uh, in, on the social media <laughs> platforms. And so if you are able to connect to it there, fantastic. And if you'd like to become a patron, oh my gosh, I would absolutely just really value being able to grow the community, grow the connections, and also uh, grow a sustainable way that I can keep doing this work. Uh, having your support would allow me to keep showing up. So we got today 10 of acorns, responsibility and dedication. We got a little, looks like a, is that a donkey? Maybe. Let's read about him. On my little glasses. We got donkey, responsibility and dedication. Trustworthy donkey carries the willingness to take on responsibilities. He personifies determination and bears a deep spiritual dedication to complete tasks yet donkey also knows his boundaries Ooh, boundary work i just love boundary work or i'm learning to love it it's also really hard and challenging he is here to remind you that when obligating yourself to personal endeavors and the demands of others consider whether you're taking on more than you can handle can you hear that one when you're considering what you're taking on, really assess whether or not you're taking on too much because sometimes we like to overfunction and take on more than we can chew. Especially performing artists, I find there's often a lot of juggling that we do between different projects and also different jobs and different kinds of um, relationships and connections that we straddle between. Continuing on, uh, when burdened by too many activities at once, perception and creativity can be blocked. Energies can be weighed down by overcommitment. Dig yourself out of the dredge by setting limitations. Break away from situations that are detrimental to your health and dedicate time for personal restoration. In clearing away the clutter, you're inviting deeper clarity and joy into your life, in turn, bringing back your personal power keywords are responsibility, overload, dedication, skills, extreme effort, demands, duty. Reverse message. When exhaustion has taken over, let go and release yourself. Motivation will return after a period of rest. Key words reversed. So 
if you are struggling um, and have experience of exhaustion or depression, then this card is, is the medicine for you. So responsibility and dedication. Some of you might find that you're in a nice clear path with those things and it's it's working out really well for you because you have practices or you've been models, healthy responsibility and dedication. And also some of you, many of you <laughs> likely from knowing my community of performing artists, a lot of us come from really complex and complicated upbringings and didn't have that kind of steady experience and part of that is what makes us really gifted as performing artists because we're able to really go with the flow of things and part of it is also maybe what creates challenges for us in the performing arts because sometimes it's hard to keep staying and being with the responsibility and the dedication that it takes to really deepen into something long term from a place of continual compatibility and some of what that might look like is making sure that you have enough financial security and stability in order to do what you want to do some of it might look like making sure you have enough emotional support to move forward and do what you want to do and some of it might look like just not taking on too much at once and learning how to say no in a way that feels healthy to you. And hopefully, you know, you can never control how other people take what you say, but you can also have a great impact on how you say things with how someone might interpret your expression of a no or of a, I cannot commit to that or I have to gracefully back out or whatever it happens to be. And I know that I've learned over the years, a lot of different kinds of communication tools, scripting, and also just different ways of being in my body that helps me connect to boundary setting. Some of those are using feeling statements. So you can say things like I'm feeling overwhelmed, or I'm feeling confused, or I'm unsure about this next step or whatever that happens to be, right? You express how you're feeling that's maybe not in congruence. And then you can express what you want. And you can say things like, I want more clarity. I would like to understand this next phase. I want to feel more secure before we move forward in the project or in the rehearsal or in the direction that your character is taking um, or even in your personal life, right? And then you can say from there, what do you think and invite them into collaboration? Or you can say, if, if you don't think it's compatible and you're sensing that it's not, and it would be dangerous for you to proceed and even try to find a way through, sometimes that's the case. And sometimes it's because we're too triggered and traumatized. And sometimes it's because the other person is in a space where they can meet us. Uh, and when that's the case, you can say things like yet, and yet often can preclude a boundary yet. I don't think where we're headed is the same direction. Yet, I think we have different ideas of what would be beneficial next. Yet, I'm looking for this and I think that I'm not gonna find that here with you. And so I'm gonna be moving in this other direction. And so I need to release this project. And so I need to put a pause on this conversation or remove myself from, uh, from the remainder of this meeting or whatever that happens to be, right? So this can work really well for us in creative connections. It can also work really well for us in our other interpersonal relationships we have. And I think, you know, there's a lot to be said about keeping a uh, business and personal life separate, right? And also, there's also a lot of those of us who meet people that we create really good friendships with, and sometimes even more than friendships with, with people that we meet in creative collaborating environments. And I think that if we can learn how to communicate really clearly expectations, limits, boundaries, and also understand 
that not everyone's going to meet us where we need or want to, and that we have the capacity to keep ourselves safe, especially as performing artists, where oftentimes there are power dynamics in the gatekeeper's experience of things that might want something of us that we don't want to give. Yet at the same time, we might fear or be uncertain about, wow, I actually would like to connect with this person, but would that be appropriate? I don't know. You know, it's important to learn how to navigate those conversations with, um, with the parties involved, with yourself, being honest with yourself first, and then with the other people involved in the project and, uh, or in the, the experience. So responsibility, dedication, showing up to the thing. Those are things I think for me that have kept me from feeling like I can keep showing up into responsibility and dedication is this fear of not knowing how to have the hard conversations that and set the boundaries that I need to set in order to feel comfortable and confident moving forward in a career, an industry, a connection that we might be off <laughs> off base in what we're expecting and wanting. And that can be challenging in a couple of ways. One, when you have those connections, it might mean that there is no way forward. And sometimes we need to let that go. And also, sometimes having the conversations will just allow us to reframe our mindset or distance ourselves or renegotiate our clarity of thought around how we come into connection with somebody and how they come into connection with us. And that can be helpful. I hope I'm not speaking too obtusely. I know this is kind of like broad terms, right? But if you have questions like that are more specific and want to ask about that, feel free to let me know. I'm happy to do like a Q&A sometime or something like that. And I'm thinking of doing some, um, maybe some artist circles again and seeing how that comes alive. I've been playing the space between, well, it is self-care, but I also am really interested in building relational dynamics. How to be self-caring while interrelationally functioning is the core of like self-care for performers. Performers are inherently interrelational, interrelational with the audience, interrelational with the director, the choreographer, the costume designer, the the everybody in the process behind the scenes and in the lead up and the execution of stuff and even the people that they never meet if it's like a recorded process or sometimes on stage too you don't meet everybody right but there's still an interconnection that happens and how do you care for yourself while being in a role like that, being in a kind of relational dynamic where you might not know everybody that's working with you and that you're working for and that they're working for you. And there's this sort of energetic and creative exchange. And sometimes it's deeply personal and very intimate. And other times it's very distant. And it's such a strange, I think, <laughs> experience but also I'm sure metaphor for life in general, you know, you eat your sandwich. You don't always know the person intimately that makes it for you when you buy it from a grocery store. Right. So I don't know that ramble, ramble, I rambled. So we pulled a card. I rambled and now we're going to do a little energy clearing. So if you need to clear off anything, any overburdened responsibilities, I invite you to do that. You can stay sitting or you can stand up and move around and just sort of like brush off what you don't need. Shake it off, get it off, get it out, shake it out of your hair. Maybe like spread it out of your face. Maybe let go of some of the stress between your eyes. And pulling that back some of the weight underneath here. Pressing on the sinuses can be kind of helpful sometimes just to kind of open up. I know sometimes mine get kind of stuffed up and it can be helpful to just put some pressure there and then open the passageways. You can also put a little pressure underneath the cheekbones and push up a little bit and that can release some of the tension in your face, little circles in your jaw, and little squeezes, just like this, little squeezes of the jaw, 
and opening, opening. Oh, you little yawn. And scratching the back of the head and dropping the head down. And pushing the head up into the hands to bring it back up. Try that again. Drop the head down and then push it up through the hands to bring it back up. One more time. Drop the head. Push it up to bring it back up. The same thing to the side. Head down and then push it up to bring it back up. A couple more times. Head down. Push it up to bring it back up. One more time. Head down. Push it up to bring it back up. And another side, head down, push it up again. And two, one more, and three. I'm gonna do a couple of head rolls. I'm gonna stand to do it. If you want to, you can too. I'm gonna take the head over to the side, drop it forward and around to the other side and back again, two. Oh, and just opening the back of the neck as you go to the back. So you don't want to crunch the neck. You want to lift up and back. And other side, all the way around. And two more. And one more. Okay, we're just gonna open the body. We're gonna open through the arms. And we're going to push out. And when you're pushing out, uh, just really imagine you're pushing away things that you don't want. You're pushing away energy or too much responsibility, right? Stuff that's just too much on your plate. Because we're not actually really good at multitasking. Humans aren't. We're good at shifting focus quickly, but we're not good at actually doing a lot of things at once. So Let's get some things out of the way that's maybe just too much at once. Push that out, push that out, push that out. And bring the arms up. And stretch over to one side. And stretch over the other side. Good. And if you'd like to be down on your hands and knees, you can. We're going to do some cat cows. So you can either place your hands down under your shoulders and your knees under your hips on the floor, or you can be in the chair. I'm gonna be in a chair just cause it's easier, I think, to show, to demonstrate, but totally up to you. We're gonna do some spine articulation, expansion, contraction. I just love this one. It just feels so good. And we'll probably do it a lot and often, and you can do it by yourself too, but it's just a little wake up of the fluidity of the spine. So we're gonna, Open, contract, elongate through the vertebra, and then contract, pull the belly button back. And again, widening through the chest, up and open, and again, through the back. And as I'm sitting on the chair, I'm sort of at the edge of the chair, of the seat of the chair. So my sits bones are just sort of at the top of it, and my legs can hang over. So I'm not totally sitting all the way back. My feet are nice and planted on the floor. And then we're gonna go side to side. So on the side to side, you're lifting up, making a little C to one side and back. Up, making a little C to the other side and back again. Side, two side. Right, you might find yourself yawning like me. And if you like to stay at one side and reach a hand up and look up in the sky, go for it. And other side, reach up. And so this isn't really about like getting in shape or working on our flexibility or anything like that. Like in dance class, like if you're a dancer, right? If you're an actor, this probably feels good and it's, it works for you. But as dancers, sometimes we're like, well, we're not doing anything. <laughs> But I want to reframe a little bit of how we move, why we move. What if it's just to like wake up the body, like actually wake it up. Like, you know, when you go to wake someone up, you're like, hi, are you awake? You don't want to be like, get up. I mean, sometimes people do that to each other. But if you're coming from like a nice, comforting, comforted way, an easeful pattern, you'd be like, I don't want, like, you don't want to scare the person when you're waking them up. Be like, it's time to wake up, you know? 
it's time to wake up. Let's wake up. And in the morning, you might like stretch and yawn. This might not be all of you. I know I've been through periods in my life where I would jump out of bed with anxiety and race to the shower and do like there was no time. And if that's you, oh gosh, my heart, that's a hard way to live. And the body breaks down over time. So this is a way that we're doing right now to practice. You can even incorporate some of that into your morning and evening routine and even a couple of times throughout a day, which is, and you don't have to do this full practice, but just coming back to what if I was tender with myself? What if I was just waking up my body? What if I was just getting my mind and my body back into the same reality? Because we spend so much time with our mind in one reality and our body in a different reality, and then they don't connect and partner with each other to live our our life, our full life. So a little mind-body integration, even as we can come back to this cat-cow experience, or if you've been doing it this whole time, how lovely. And just think of it as like the mind and the body. They get to flux with each other. Yeah. So if you have these two sort of experiences, you have one side and the other. You have these two polarizing or polarity experiences, duality happening. Maybe they feel similar. Maybe they feel different, but they're two things that are happening on both sides of one's body. And we're just going to take it and we're going to take one to the other side, one to the other side. Yeah. So you're just taking something. It's just a metaphor and you don't have to know what this thing is. It's just this idea that I'm used to having things like this and I'm going to, what happens if I change it to the other side? A metaphor with a little body response. Yeah. And then we're going to try the other side. What if the thing I'm used to having, um, the other side changed sides. Ooh. It shifts your body's awareness and experience a little bit. It helps integrate a little bit of what happens in between the mind-body experience. And coming back to neutral and this feels good to me for some reason. I invite you to do something similar if you want. It just sort of feels like I'm like raising my life force, raising my breath, raising my posture, raising my confidence, right? Just, just this sort of like, oh, lightness, maybe lifting things off, right? Whatever it is that feels like it, it has, I also still feel really sturdy into the floor. So even if you want to experience that, like pushing away and a lifting up, right? pushing away and a lifting up can feel pretty good. And I invite you to just do a couple of little hip movements. You can do forward and back, side to side, circles, but just sort of open up the space down here, your first and second chakras. Your root chakra is at the base, the perineum, and the sacral chakra is just in sort of where the, the reproductive organs are, right? In this in this area around here. And those often can feel stuck and congested when we don't feel safe in our lives, when we feel like something on the physical reality doesn't feel stable. And sometimes that happens a fair amount with a performing artist lifestyle. There's a lot that is uncertain, unknowable, or you got to wait and see. <laughs> you have the project deadline, but there's a lot of things that have to happen before then. And are you going to make it? Where are you going to land? So opening that up and then opening up this third chakra, this solar plexus area. And this is a lot of creativity and interpersonal relationships. And we get a lot of what's called etheric cords, connection patterns that they can happen anywhere, but a lot often, oftentimes we get like these pits in our stomachs and this feeling that we're connected or tied to other people, this desire, this, this, um, ache of <laughs> angst that can kind of happen. And it, it, it's not that it only happens there, but that's a common place that that can happen. You just rub that and just be like, Oh, 
close your eyes and just say, I see you. You don't have to try so hard and you're valuable just as you are. And you can also unhook any hooks that you have in other people, any hooks that people have in you and imagine that vroom, they just sort of go back like little tentacles returning to their, their octopus. <laughs> You're one and other people are their own. And just, it's okay to be me. I don't have to be sucked onto others and they don't have to suck onto me. I, we can release those grasps a little bit. Yeah. <sighs> We'll continue the cleaning, but that one's one to 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 really be with the truth of that. And so now I'm up in the heart, this fourth chakra, heart space, just in the center. It's not over the actual heart, but in the center of the of the body, right down the sternum. It's just that heart area. I invite you to place your hands there and just sort of press and rock. And see if you can feel what it would feel like to feel safe with yourself. That your hands represent yourself and your heart represents yourself. And you're feeling what it's like to be safe with yourself. Both your heart and your hands are safe with each other. Your heart is safe in your hands and your hands are safe with your heart. Deep breath in. Exhale. And deepening into that. Moving on up to the throat chakra. Oh, the throat chakra. My gosh, do some of us have some challenges there? I'm going to invite you to take your fingers and just open, open. You're sort of allowing the lymph to travel. Opening up space, maybe over to one side, pulling down. Any stress from the back of the neck and the other side. Let's pull it down. And then we've got this clavicle bone that extends here to here. So below that, there's the sternum, which is, so it's not going to make you feel like you're choking. If you feel like you're choking, you're too high. Go below that onto the bone. And we're going to just push down and out and kind of spread a little bit spread open that opening up that space between so both hands now on the shoulders between the throat and the heart because oftentimes we'll speak from the throat ah, yawning yawning is great it's usually a sign that you're shifting kind of conscious awareness i know in certain classes it's like you can't yawn <laughs> i know teachers are like that it makes it look like you're bored but Yawning can be actually so healthy and so helpful. So when we work together, I encourage yawning <sighs> to fill the body, to fill the brain with oxygen and allow yourself to shift your awareness just a little bit. But I was saying, so we're just sort of opening up the space between the heart and the throat because so often those are contracted. So hand behind the neck, and then one hand just here above the heart, but below the actual throat. And we're just going to take a couple deep breaths while you feel and expand, maybe even lift or rock your hands to feel the support of your hands, the connection of your hands. Again, feeling safe with yourself again. Two. One more deep breath. You can play around with exactly where your hands are. And if they need to shift a little bit, your body, trust that your body knows what it needs. So these are invitations that I'm leading and guiding you through. But sometimes the body will say, no, I want this. And if your body says, no, I want this, <laughs> practice giving yourself what your body is needing, what your body wants and longs for. See what that feels like. Okay, two more chakras. So third eye right here. Oh, we'll do a couple of yawns. Rubbing your third eye. It's the spot between the eyebrows and above the nose. Oh, a couple of yawns. Oh. Deep breath in again. Ah. Again. 
Audible exhale. Ah, one more deep. Ah, good. And to the top of the head now, we got our little crown chakra. We're just going to open, open, open that. Audible exhales there too. Oh, let's see if you can send your like vibration of your sound up to the top of your head. Oh, like what do you have to do? If you're a singer, you might have your certain notes that you hit, but I, less about the notes and more about the, can you feel the intention and the vibration of your sound pressing, vibrating at the top of your head? And try that. Uh, yeah, you can try that a couple more times if you want to. And just scratch and shake out your hair. If you have hair, if you don't, then just do on your scalp. Mm, yeah, wake up those hands, wake up that field. <sighs> Claps are great. Snaps are great to kind of feel like you're waking up. We're just going to walk around the room. Walk around the room just to feel what it's like to be in your body after you've done all of that. Notice what's it like to be on your feet. You can take a couple of plies if you want. Move around anything you desire. And if you would like to massage your feet and your hands, now's a good time for that. Just tell them they're loved. I think we're going to keep it nice and simple today. We're not going to do any journaling or uh, embodiment. It's just a little bit of somatic care and that little quick little card reading. So responsibility and dedication. So we've sort of put ourselves in a nice space for accessing and aligning to clarity around what we really have the capacity for so that we can show up with responsibility and from a place of dedication. And we can be dedicated to our own self-care as we take on our responsibilities. And one doesn't have to cancel out the other. And in fact, they work so beautifully when you blend them together and you build a life from there. That's a place where you can have sustainable creative practices from. So with that, I'm going to leave you today and I'll see you next week for another self-paced self-care practice. <laughs> Until next time. Bye loves. <laughs>